Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and I'm back with another ink profile. We are working our way right through this ink flight. This is the number 23 ink flight box uh, by Ink Journal, the December 2018 and we're on silver bells. So this is ink number six and we've only got one left. So here it is, silver bells. And this is a really neat ink, but I want to point out to you right away that um, I put water on it, just like all the rest of them. And if you'll just notice how it stayed pretty stable. So that's an interesting thing to keep in mind as we look at all the rest of, of what's going on here. Okay, so um, here's another interesting thing. This is silver bells ready to go into the uh, bath test. And here is the burnished gold from yesterday. And they look quite a bit alike. This is just a little bit lighter. But that's the underlying uh, ink there. I, I thought that was so interesting. So let, let's find out what happens with silver bells. <laughs> we'll put it in there and it'll, it'll get drenched. And then we'll look at it again before we close. And when we do candy cane, I'll show you how this came out. Oh, you could tell I'm paranoid about... Uh, another uh, water spill so there it's finally covered okay so let's get right into the rhodia gold book where I've got all these laid out here and whoo the spread is filling right in we've just got one more spot and these are just been such fun colors and as we as I found out right after I finished yesterday doing burnished gold that the uh, Flex Nib Friday, sure enough, they did release the formulas on all of these inks. So all you have to do is go to inkjournal.com and click on their blog. But I'll link it for you directly to that blog post. So you can get the formulas for any of these that you want to try mixing from the Platinum Mix Free. Okay, yesterday I forgot to show you the chromatography. So let's do that right away before I end up burying it here. So here it is for Silver Bells. Let's see. It's very, very simple. Um, you could see it, it didn't have all that other, uh, you know, complexity. Let me grab the other one that Burnished Gold had. Here, Here's Burnished Gold. Here's Silver Bells. So it, it's quite simple. Now, I haven't really taken time yet to study those uh, formulas. So, you know, I, there's, there's a, a facts there in the formulas that would help us understand that too. But that's very interesting to me. There's quite a difference. So, here we are. Um, wow, that had incredible shading on the Tomoy River paper. I'm thinking you can pretty much see that. Um, I just couldn't tell where this ink fell till I really started to study it. Because remember, we had Silver Fox, which was too light for me. And then we had, then I fell in love with Diamine Earl Grey, which I thought was going to be too dark, but is I'm using it all the time. Um, so anyway, I saw right away that I liked it in the broad nib, and then in this paper I liked it in the Lamy Fine nib, which is really nice. Um, you know, it's it's I love silver, and and I'm coming to really really enjoy a nice gray ink. So now uh, I've made a note. The formulas are now available on the Ink Journal blog, so that is a happy thing. I bet you there's a lot of people happy about that who like to mix inks. It's not something I've gotten into yet, but I really, really appreciate that. I'm um, real thankful that they did release it. So let's let's look at this in some other notebooks too and on some paper. So we'll start right in with the Cafe Note. Uh, by Nanami Paper Company and it's Tomoe River paper with a nine millimeter line grid so on the left as usual is the broad nib I'm hoping you can see this and then over here um, except for my word of the year it, it's all in the same ink in the um, silver bells in a Lamy fine nib so I'm doing my intermittent fasting and low carb and it's going really really super well and I'm trying to transfer the skills that I picked up or the, the way I went about learning how to eat healthy and how to save and, and be more organized and more uh, common sense <laughs> in my uh, pen hobby. But not to fear, I'm not going to stop doing ink profiles. I have so many inks in sample form that people have given me 
that uh, I could continue for a long time just with that. And also, I, you know, I want to moderate and I want to have common sense, but I don't want to be so drastic that I just say, I'm all done with my pens, I'm all done with my inks. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I, you know, it's just like with eating. It's funny with eating though. You have no choice. You have to, you, you know, we have to eat. Um, we can intermittent fast and we can fast and all that, but we, we have to sustain health. We have to have proper nutrition or we have uh, all these problems. And so learning how to do that, I, I was like, there's nothing I can't do. If I can learn how to control my eating, then I can learn how to you know, spend right and, and, uh, well, and not, um, waste and not be ridiculous, you know, not have, you know, 20 pens with the, the same exact nib. So I'm, I'm, for me, I'm just wanting to like work on it work on it. That's all. I'm not, I'm not going to um, throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, uh, wow. Must be, I need to learn something because that's when I get in lecture mode. Okay. Here's the Nemesine notebook, and this um, is my continuing on with the end of review, the Boho Berry Challenge. And then we were, the prompt was out of my comfort zone. But what I liked, it, oh, I like this. That just shows an incredible um, range uh, of the color. You know, it, it just is dark, dark, dark. And then it goes down to just the lightest whisper of a gray like and I think my lightest gray is silver fox or maybe it's that pilot of Zuku. we'll look at that in a minute um so yeah I'm talking about how I'm out of my comfort zone when I'm not making quite a few impulse buys for my pen hobby but you know what it's going to be better the way it's going to be now so and and I won't feel like I'm I'm um being wasteful or anything so with my resources so all right so there's that now on the i changed papers because i filled up my other tomoy river and we're changing over from the cream to the white paper this is the a4 size a larger and it's white so here is the silver bells on that and i did really like it in the broad nib and I thought that, it, you know, for me, it felt a little dry and wasn't quite what I wanted. I wouldn't want to write a letter with it, with the Lamy Fine Nib. But I could probably say that about almost all colors except the super saturated dark colors. So that's that's not uncommon for me to say that. Okay, then on the Loistrum, oh, we're filling this up too. I'm going to have to get another sheet. Um, it's down here at the bottom in the broad nib and in the Lamy Fine Nib. Now this paper does okay with a light ink like that. I didn't feel like it was fading out too badly even with the fine nib so I was happy with that. And then we go to Rhodia Dot Grid 80 gram and I know that I was very happy with the broad nib. Oh I put a down arrow so no I wasn't happy with it in the Lamy Fine Nib but that's a dry nib. There's really it shouldn't surprise me and it wouldn't uh, wouldn't be that way for all of you. I know some of you are using flex nibs and the whole nine yards. Um, I haven't quite got the hang of it yet. I do have a Noodler's Ahab that I'm trying to learn to write with. <laughs> quite frankly, I may put a regular number six nib in it because it's just not working too good for me. Okay, here's the Claire Fontaine 90 gram French ruled paper. Uh, okay, it was the same story on this as it was on the Rhodia. I liked it in the broad nib. I have a smiley there. And I have a, uh, that it lightened in the Lamy Fine Nib, so I put a down arrow. I, d I just wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to do that on that paper. But, here's the Office Depot College Rule, and it's way down at the bottom. I guess I've got the back of this now. Um, and it was fine here, um, in the broad nib. And then, I guess it's open to, I put an asterisk, don't know what that means. <laughs> Note to self, uh. Be clearer. Okay, so I don't believe that it dragged or gave me that dry, dry feeling on this paper or I would have put a down arrow or an unhappy face or something. So that's my that's my technical technique there. But I, I know I was happy with it in the broad nib. So. And this paper's thirsty. It's more like the Loistrum, but not quite as hardy as the Loistrum. Okay, so let's peek in on what we've got going on here. Aha! Uh -huh. So this is actually going to stay, I think, uh, 
Oh, now I can't find the other one. It looks like it's going to be darker than the burnished gold remains were. So, oh, even the bell stayed. Huh, very good. That may explain why it didn't move around a lot with the chromatography. But let's take a look at the panel. Now, I pulled a fast one, but please uh, let me bring your attention to... I had this gray panel with a white spot in the middle, and I just couldn't help myself. I went ahead and put silver bells right in the middle. Now, I normally put it up in the right uh, left-hand corner, so just so that you know, it's right in the middle, and we get to compare it to all the rest of the grays that I have. Um, and, you know, right away, it comes to my mind that it moves around a little bit more than Lexington Gray does. Lexington Gray is pretty bulletproof. I mean, it didn't, I don't see anything that moved there. But this does move around just a little, but it's quite stable. And we'll see in the little uh, visual journal that that kind of makes it a dull, a dull uh, kind of ink for, for that application, for the Nick Stewart application. But um, there it is. So you can compare. Now, I, I'm running um, my Twisby Go pen with a broad nib. I think, no, this is the, the stub, the 1.1 stub with the Diamine Earl Gray. And so it, it comes out a little darker with that. Of course, it is a darker ink. But I really, I really think it compares well to the Silver Fox, which almost doesn't make sense because this looks a lot lighter on here. But if I remember right, in a nib, that's how it, you know, I felt like it was really light and I was okay in the broad nib. Then it just fell out, you know, it just fell out. But this is holed up just a little bit better. In, in like the fine nib because you don't lose it completely. Geez, I don't know. That, I'm probably just making it more confusing. But this this is my favorite gray. And I do like this in a broad nib. I really do. Especially on the, the right paper, the, the cheaper paper, the Loistrum. And it was okay on the white um, Tomoy River for me. So th it was it was nice to get, get it right in the middle because I could compare it you know, right beside all of these different ones. These two are shimmer inks. The J.R. Bond Stormy Gray and the Diamine Moon Dust. So I have a feeling that I'm going to really like Noodler's Lexington Gray. I need to get past the idea that, okay, it's, you know, um, I kind of like the inks that move around more for some reason. But that's going to be an excellent one for envelopes and for whatever I want to keep solid with my artwork. So I need to remember that. So there, there it is. You know, it doesn't move around at all like like this ink. And the di the diamines are much more, um, they're less bulletproof. They're less stable with water. So I think the only thing left is to show you what happened on the visual journal, which is kind of, <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't really like it. I did the exact same thing that I did up here on the Snowmageddon. But because this doesn't move around as much, I couldn't get any movement down. You can see where the water was almost. Or I can. I could see the water was all saturated down here. But I couldn't get my, um, I couldn't get the the gray to move down to create any kind of a foreground at all. But it's okay. I mean, this is kind of how I learn, you know, what's going on with these inks is to see. And then the drastic difference between the burnished gold where it, it did... Almost anything you wanted it to do, you could keep making lines and get all this beautiful, like, it's almost like a reflection thing. And and a lot of times you can get at least some, but not with this one. So that's just something to know, I guess. It, it made some trees and it tried to stay, I, I don't know if you could see, but it started to almost stay permanent, like little, uh, it almost looks like a woods with garland, you know, it's crazy. But that's what happened, so... What is next is really exciting because next is the last one in this series. So um, I plan to do it tomorrow. Uh, this afternoon I'll do up the panel and uh, I'll get to enjoy whatever letters I write today will be with the candy cane. So <laughs> either I don't know whether to apologize or to, or to say you got lucky no? <laughs> if you get a letter from me with a candy cane. So um this is fun and then next i really want to move on to those ferris wheel inks that are um that the samples that i got in the other two and we'll just start planning you know kind of together what will be next after that so have a great day and thank you for being here bye for now